welcome to Summer Sessions with Amanda. Normally, we have a podcast every month, and we still do um, through the summer, but Allie and I take a break during the summer because summer is crazy for us, and it's hard for us to be together regularly to record during the summer, but you can catch the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and livingoutloud.today, our website, all throughout the summer, and also this YouTube uh, show, our Titus Tea Time, will um, resume back in the fall. We're going to talk about um, loving our families, and so we're just taking a break with that for this summer, but Summer Sessions with Amanda is here, and I just wanted to do this because I wanted you guys to meet some special friends of mine, and today we have Catherine Hike, and she is a friend I met a few years ago through mutual friends, Kenny and Valerie Dean, and I just fell in love with Catherine, and you will too. So I'm going to read her bio um, really quick because it's long. It's awesome. <laughs> it's um. Katherine Hike is best known for being crowned the youngest ever Miss Teen USA in 2015 when she was 15 years old. After her amazing year representing the Miss Universe organization, she signed with Next Model Management and enjoyed modeling throughout the United States and Mexico while finishing high school. She graduated with honors in 2018 and decided to concentrate on her college education. Catherine is currently an upcoming senior at Louisiana State University, majoring in mass communications with a concentration in public relations and a minor in business. She loves being involved on campus in her sorority, Kappa Delta, multiple honor societies and campus organizations. And when she's not studying or working at Move Me Marketing as a content creator, Catherine can be found working out, shopping at Home Goods, or drinking a coffee at the nearest coffee shop. So welcome, Catherine. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. You are awesome. And um, we have a lot in common. Um, so number one, coffee. Love coffee. What do you mm. want? Um, I get a hot vanilla latte or sometimes a cold brew. It just kind of depends on the mood. <laughs> um, well, I usually drink mine black these days, but I like the flavored coffees. So like hazelnut, car uh, vanilla caramel, um, caramel, caramel, however you say it. I used to <laughs> say caramel. The reason I've started saying caramel, I don't know why. But um, so I love coffee um, and home goods. I love home goods. Home Goods, TJ Maxx, Ross, they're all very dangerous to go into. <laughs> I love them. Home Goods this year. Well, yeah, this year, because in Oxford, we just got it like maybe two years ago, but I just started going in the last year and it's amazing. I love their pillows. If you ever need pillows, that's the place to go. I know. We have so <laughs> many aisles, so many options. <laughs> so good. Well, what I, I met you a few years ago, like I said, and, um, to our listeners, what I love about Catherine is she is not only beautiful on the outside, but what I love about her is she is just a, as beautiful on the inside. She has this light um, that shines, and I know it's from the Lord, and she's just super sweet. I think when I think of Catherine, I think of sweet Catherine. So um, I can't wait for you guys to get to know her through this interview. We've got a lot of questions. And um, so thank you, Catherine, for just taking the time to be with me this morning. Of course, I'm so excited. Okay, so the first question is, what made you compete in Miss Teen USA? So I guess it kind of starts with my mom and my sister. So my mom kind of did pageants when she was younger, I want to say, and then my older sister did a few. And growing up in Louisiana, there's so many festivals for anything you can think of, and there's always a queen. So I did a few of those growing up, but nothing really serious, nothing like toddlers and tears, crazy. Um, but And then I started working with a coach, and he kind of coached the older girls that were going to Miss Louisiana or Miss Louisiana Teen USA. So I kind of grew up watching it and kind of looking up to those girls. And then one year I got to go to fantasy camp with the Miss Louisiana pageant. So it's kind of like a little experience for younger girls to go and learn how to do your hair and makeup and go backstage and walk on the stage and stuff. And I was like, oh, like, this is really fun. Like I could maybe see myself doing this one day. Um, and then the next year I decided to do it. I was 14. 
Um, and my mom was kind of like, uh, you're so young. Like the age division, I think is like 14 to 19 or 18. So, and no one really wins that young. So she was kind of hesitant to it. And she was like, we'll let you do the prelim, see how that goes. And then we'll move on from there. So I did the prelim. I won it at 14 and then had two to three months to get ready for Miss Teen Louisiana. I got there. I was 14 again, the youngest one, um, made top 15, top 10, top five. And I was freaking out because at the time I kind of didn't really prepare for top five because like the goal was 15. Um, I really wanted photogenic for some reason. So 15 and photogenic was kind of the goal. Of, co of course, I wanted to win. I just didn't know that was like an option almost. Um, got up there and I completely bombed my on stage question. I got really, really nervous. And, um, and in that moment, I was kind of like, okay, well, this is it. Like I'll come back next year, whatever. And they started doing the awards and I ended up winning. And it was definitely a God thing just because if you bomb your on stage question, you usually, you know, don't win. I don't know. That's just kind of the way it is. Um, but the judges said that they saw something in me and that, you know, it was meant to be. So I won that and then prepared for Teen USA showed up again as the youngest one and ended up winning it. And I was really calm at Miss Teen USA, like when I made top five and stuff. So I was like, something's going on here. I don't know what it is. And it was definitely God's presence during that, but it was definitely a rolling ball, rolling ball effect. And it just, one thing happened to another. So it was cool to see how it worked out. That is amazing. I just love the fact <laughs> that you had new, like inside God put that nudge in you, like you wanted to do it, even though your mom was saying, all the right things and what she knew to be true you just right. had that feeling that you needed to do it and so mm -hmm. I, I love how God does that for us and, and kind of got you know he guides us and right. uh, so I can imagine goodness like all the responsibilities that had to have come with being the right. young ever Miss Teen USA how did you manage to balance high school um, all the little things in life and doing that yeah well I definitely had a strong group of people behind me one being my mom and my, my whole family of course but my mom really stood behind me and helped me organize everything I learned time management throughout that whole year because I was a sophomore in high school I want to say I did dance and softball and all these different things and then juggled you know traveling to different areas to do events and stuff so it was very crazy so definitely having my mom behind me helped and then I'm from a really small town called Franklinton everyone knows everyone and they were all just so understanding when it came to school and stuff they're like you're, you're already doing so well in school like we'll help you we'll meet you where we need to and um, we'll make it work because they knew it was a once in a lifetime type of thing. So I definitely had a very supportive hometown and stuff. So that helped throughout the whole experience. That's so cool. Um, well, what are some things that God taught you during that whole experience? Yeah. So I definitely learned a lot about myself throughout that whole year. And um, one of them really being um, that God really places us in in situations and experiences um, for his plan. And, you know, I would have never thought or imagined that I would have been given this platform to reach so many people and stuff. And really just realizing the importance of using what he's given us to like for his glory and to reach others and to spread his love and joy in any way we can, whether that be through meeting people and interacting with them, or maybe just posting positive things on social media to be a role model or just a little light of joy. So I definitely just learned the importance of glorifying him and anything that he puts us in. It's so good. And you've done a, a great job of just using that platform to do just that. Um, you know, so many times we can see places that maybe God has put us, but we don't see that they're places that God has put us because a lot of times we think that we have to be in the spotlight um, to be doing what God wants us to do. Um, but a lot of times, you know, God puts, he puts us in different places and right. spotlight or no spotlight, they're all equally important um, right. being obedient to where he has called us. And, you know, even in ministry, I see a lot of times, uh, the race to be famous and uh, you, people feel like they have to be well known to be doing the ministry that they're doing. And that's just absolutely, uh, a lie from the enemy. You know, God has not called right. everyone to be famous. Um, mm -hmm. and, and everything is just as important, um, 
as that. And so um, I love though, where he puts us is where we need to shine the light. And God has placed, mm -hmm. God placed you in that, on that platform and you've done just that. And I'm so proud of you for um, choosing that and, and, and yeah. <laughs> Yeah, doing that. Um, yeah. If you could give advice to a teenage girl who may be thinking about competing um, in any kind of pageant, what would you give her? So I've had the opportunity to kind of be on the other side of things. I've gotten to judge Miss Teen USA, Miss North Carolina, and Miss South Carolina. And it's been really fun sitting on the other side of the table and really seeing that, you know, when you're going into a pageant or maybe a job interview or something else, the people who are sitting there aren't necessarily looking for you to check off all these boxes of certain characteristics or things like that. They're really just looking for someone that um, is ready for the job and that is their selves and really just um, know that you don't have to change yourself throughout the whole process. Go into it as yourself. And if it's part of God's plan, then it's going to work out. And if not, maybe there's something else for you that he's holding on to maybe a little farther down the road. Um, trust his timing and go for it because I could have let so many things hold me back from deciding to compete um, in Miss Louisiana and the Miss Teen USA. I could have held back that I was too young or that I didn't love speaking in front of people at the time or something like that. But when you step out of your comfort zone and you truly trust God that, you know, he's got your back, he's going to help you through this, you'll see amazing things. So just go for it. Do it. <laughs> so good. So great advice. Um, okay, here is a question that I was kind of proud of when I, I was coming up with the question. Um, proud of it because it is huge in our walk with Christ to know this. And so my question to you is um, how did you remind yourself when you had that title as Miss Teen USA um, that your identity did not come from that, that it is your identity is in being a child of God? How did you remind yourself and keep focused on what was important there? Yeah, so definitely going into the whole process itself. Um, before I left for Miss Teen USA the night before, I love journaling my prayers and just devotions in general because I love being able to go back and see what I've prayed for and see kind of how God has worked through that or, you know, made something happen. And just before going into it, I, I had it in my head that, you know, if this is part of God's plan, it's going to happen. You know, God, if you're going to put me in this position, you know, help me show you through, you know, my light and stuff. And um, so definitely just noticing that like anything that God gives us, whether it be big or small, he's going to use us and that we need to use what he gives us to his glory. So just knowing that, you know, my identity is not necessarily in this worldly achievement, it's in him and that he's given me this achievement and this spotlight to, you know, impact others. If that makes sense, that was kind of all over the place. Um, and then, you know, just having people behind me, like my family, my friends that are walking with me in my, um, my life with Christ, you know, just reminding me of that, you know, not letting me get too overwhelmed. I mean, I was so young at the time too. So I needed people kind of guiding me and helping me through that as well, but definitely just realizing that our true purpose is here on earth is to, you know, glorify him and to live for him. So not getting caught up in worldly things. That's truth right there. And, um, I'm glad that you shared that because it's so important that we do because so many times, you know, we want to label ourselves as being what we do and um, the titles that the world wants to give us and uh, mm -hmm. being, a, being a child of God is number one. Um, and so I'm glad, so glad that you know that um, and that you're able to be a light and that an example of reminding um, others of that. So how... Um, how was life after the crown? How, after you had to give up your crown, was that hard? Yeah, it was very strange just because I went from, you know, going to all these events and traveling all over the place and having that spotlight, you know, that platform and then going back to high school, you know, I was so young at the time and previous winners had all these plans of like going to college and moving to New York and lots of different things. And mine was very different because I was the first one to ever be that young and have that title. So I just was going back to high school. I was going back to start my junior year, you know, to go to dance team practice, just things like that. So um, it was very strange and it was definitely a transition. And that in that moment, I kind of saw, you know, my identity shifting, you know, if I would have seen it as like being Miss Teen USA that was stripped away. So then I would have been left with nothing, but I was left with having my identity in Christ. So 
it was very strange, but then again, it was very refreshing, I guess you could say. I was excited to go back to a little normalcy, but um, I signed with a modeling agency kind of right after. So that was kind of like the next big step, I guess you could say, but it was nice going back home and spending time with friends and family. Awesome. Um, do you ever plan on competing in Miss USA? Do you get this question a lot? I get it all the time. And if I had a dollar for every time, I would be rich by now. <laughs> um, but my experience was so good. I grew so much throughout that year. And those experiences and the people that I met will forever, you know, impact my life and be in my life. Um, I'm not going to say no, because I, I had such a great experience, but I'm going to say no for like in this point in my life, you know, if that makes sense, like it's not my time right now, maybe yeah. give it a few years and we'll see. But um, right now I'm going in my senior year of college and I'm trying to figure out plans for after college and everything. So right now it's not the right time, but I'll never say no. We'll see. I think that's wise. <laughs> it's very wise because we don't, I, I answer that question a lot too, with different things. I'm like, you know what? I'm never going to say never because God has taught me <laughs> that he has the plans. My job and your job is right. to seek him and then he right. will show us in his time, his plan. And so mm -hmm. um, that's my advice to my sons, uh, especially my sons in college and right. graduate next year. Um, yes. You know, because there's this pressure of like what we're supposed to do in life and um, mm -hmm. always asking, I'm like, you know what? It's okay that you don't know um, right. your job. Your one and only job is to seek the Lord and he mm -hmm. will lead you and guide you, you know? And um, so I think that that's very wise. You answer that question. Great. I've quickly learned that if we try to make our own plans, it's never going to work out. <laughs> Anytime that in my life that I've tried to be like, I'm going here and I'm doing this and this is it. And then it just doesn't work out. And it ends up being great. Like, his plan and whatever happens after ends up being so much better than what I had planned, you know? So it's, it's awesome to see how he works and how we have to be patient. Cause if we just look at that moment and we're like, oh, goodness, but if we see the, the bigger timeline, then we can see truly how much greater his plan was. That's a good word. What are your passions, Catherine? Um, I have a lot, but the ones off the top of my head right now, I definitely love serving people in my community that really started when I was younger, you know, in high school and different clubs and stuff. And then that's kind of trans translated into my college experience. I love working with um, special needs individuals and adults. That's something I worked, I worked with that cause a lot during my years in USA. So in college, I joined the, the Best Buddies Club. Um, I love just being involved in any way. I, I love going to do the Night to Shine prom in Baton Rouge. I don't know if you've heard of that. Have you yeah, heard of that? I do. Yeah. yeah. I, know. I love doing things that and just you know spreading love and joy it's just so much fun to see that and getting to bless people and have fun with it um and then I love pouring into like Wait, young real, real quick pause have you gotten to meet Demi Tebow I have yeah okay it's such a such you cool love that world. Shine, and then like the pageant thing I'm thinking y'all y'all need to be friends right yeah no she was Miss Universe a couple of years after me, but when I went back to judge Teen USA, she was there. So we got to meet. And it's so weird because like, I think, I don't think of myself as like famous. I don't know. I just, yeah. I can't think of myself as that, but I guess in the pageant world, you know, when you're a national title holder, people know you and stuff. And she was like, oh my gosh, like, I know you like all this stuff. I'm like, oh my gosh, she knows me. Like, this is so strange. Like you were Miss Universe. Like I, I've watched you. You're, she's, she's the it, like um definition of famous so I guess I was just a little starstruck in the moment that she knew me I don't know but she's very sweet very sweet um but yeah and then another passion of mine is pouring into younger children I I love being a camp counselor I've learned that early on in my high school years um so I've, I've loved um mentoring and being just a, a role model and a friend to a lot of campers through like Camp Fuego and Camp Ozark and stuff and then I love traveling too. I studied abroad in France a few summers ago. That was kind of like the top of my traveling list. Um, but yeah, I just love exploring new places. And I've been to Honduras on mission trips and stuff. So it kind of all circles back to like traveling and meeting people and showing them love, I guess. Well, I love that you love to pour into younger people because that's what we're supposed to do as Christians, you know, <clears throat> share what we've learned, um, the good stuff and the hard stuff and right. uh, where God has uh, taught us, you know, and I think uh, earlier I was thinking about how 
you know, through your experience, I'm sure God taught you uh, so many things that are good and probably things that you learned about yourself. I mean, you know, we learn good and hard stuff. And um, so, yeah, thank you for investing in younger people. It makes so much um, of a difference. And um, my next question is, what is your favorite Bible verse? Um, so I have a few, but the one that I can think of off my head, I'm going to, I have it right here on my computer. I don't want to <laughs> mess it up, but it's Proverbs 19, 21. And it says many are the plans in a man's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. And that kind of goes back to the discussion we had earlier about, you know, making our own plans and how I've said, anytime I've tried to make my own plans, they always get wiped away because I'm not the one that's supposed to be making my own plans. But, um, I really clung on to this verse in my like transition from high school to college, I was so overwhelmed with, you know, where am I supposed to go? Where, where am I supposed to um, meet new people? And what am I going to do with my life and all those big decisions? And um, I, I clung on to this because I'm like, it's going to work out the way it's supposed to. So I've held on to this verse a lot of different seasons in my life. So it seems to always be a good one. <laughs> I love it. Well, I was thinking about you today and the verse that I think reminds me of you is I need to read it. It's Exodus 9 16. It says, But I have raised you up for this very purpose that I might show you my power and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. I don't know. It just makes me think of you, just how God um, put you in on that platform and still has you on that platform. I mean, He continues to put you on that platform and you continue to choose to bring Him glory through it. And so um, I think of you when I think of that verse and it's just so good. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. Um, Okay. So before we leave though, um, that was a lot of great stuff. Um, If you know me, I have to, we have to talk about some random unimportant things because I just think (laughs) life is serious and we have to have those serious talks, but we also need to talk about just silly weird things, right? So um, we, first of all, um, we talked about what you liked and um, fun things. We both like coffee. Um, mm-hmm. Allie and I talk about this on the podcast and we talk about like, what is our favorite find or favorite thing that we may be just really liking or loving right now? So do you yeah. have anything like that that you would want to share that your is your favorite? Yeah. So I don't have like a, a product or something like that, but my favorite thing that I've been like watching, I guess on Netflix, this can be a, a recommendation. I'm sure everyone knows it, but I started watching Gilmore Girls. One of my roommates started watching it and I was like, oh, it's kind of fun. You know, it's lighthearted. So I started watching it and I'm addicted now. And my mom, um, <laughs> my mom was at home with me one day and she saw me watching. She's like, oh my gosh, like I used to watch that all the time. Like everyone thought that I looked like the mom Lorelai. And I'm like, wait, you so do. That's so cool. So I'm, I'm making my way through it, but I'm trying to watch it slowly because I hate finding a good show and then it ending and having to find a new one. So and that's I my do favorite. See it. I do see your mom in her. And also she, Lauren Graham. I never really watched Gilmore Girls, but I remember people talking about it. Um, she is in this new series, the Mighty Ducks new series, and we've been watching it as a family just for fun. And, um, she looks like my sister too, so much. People used to tell me that. And now I'm like seeing her mannerisms. I see your mom too. That's so fun. They need to go into acting. They need to follow her footsteps. (laughs) Okay. So, um, here's my other question. So like, is there anything that you can't relate to? Like just that comes to mind. So example, um, I can't relate to picky eating. So uh, my whole family, they're picky eaters. And I can't relate to that because I can pretty much eat anything. Um, Like (laughs) there may be like three things in the whole wide world that I just cannot eat. Other than like, even if I don't like it, I can make myself eat it. So like I can't relate to picky eating. Um, right. Another thing is I can't relate to people not wanting a massage. So like on special mm-hmm. occasions, I'll get massages. I always tell my boys, you don't have to buy me anything for Mother's Day. But if you're thinking about it, don't even think about it. You can never go wrong with a massage because I love right. 
massages. So when somebody says to me, like this has happened a few times and, and no judgment because God makes everybody different. Uh -huh. um, and they say, I just don't want people touch me. I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't relate to that because <laughs> I love massages. Anyway, right. it's like one of my love languages. It's not even in that book, but it's one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Anything you can't relate to. I can definitely relate to the picky eater and the massage. Like anytime I get a massage, it's the best thing ever. But yeah. I can also think of like not being able to relate to the fact that people don't like coffee just because like, yeah. I, I don't, I don't think I liked it when I was younger necessarily, but when I started like the whole teen USA thing and losing sleep and traveling so much, I quickly found coffee and love it. Um, and I like need it in the morning, like every morning I need the coffee. So, but two of my best friends don't like it. So I guess I can, I can make it work with people that don't like coffee, but <laughs> that's something I don't understand. Yeah. It's so like, I mean, I can, I can still hang out with them and be friends and be close to them. I just can't right. relate to the situation. Like, right. You know. and then also people who like don't like dogs like I'm such a dog lover I grew up with dogs so I just don't understand I don't yeah. well and I can't relate I cannot relate to liking cats yeah I can't relate. right so. I've, my aunt has two cats that are like I don't know the kind but they're like really fluffy I don't know it makes them better if they're like really fluffy yeah. <laughs> but cats are my favorite either so much more a dog person so that's so fun okay so I hate that our time has come to an end. Um, I could yeah. talk to you forever. And you do need to come to Oxford because you need to come see our golden doodle. I do. Have seen pictures. Also, you haven't met her in person and she is like the best dog ever. And she's having right. puppies. So you need to come this summer. Yeah. She has puppies so you can see her little puppies because you would love that. But can you tell our listeners how they can stay connected to you? I mean, I know you don't have a book or anything, but you might in the future. And um, <laughs> you have Instagram. And yes, I have Instagram, it's just Catherine Hike. And yeah, you can follow me there. I just post about, you know, normal life stuff, maybe some encouragement. So you can find me on there. <laughs> Catherine, this has been a pleasure. And you know, I do. I love you. I think you're precious in every way and just so proud of you and who you have um, let God be through you. Thank so. you. Yeah, I've, I've loved coming on and chatting. It was so much fun. And I hope anyone listening got something out of it. So thank you. Right. <laughs> well, see you later.